Hi folks, how are you doing? Yet another game of the World Championship match is over. The game number 10 is in the books. Uh, it was Anand to take white pieces today and of course he was expected to push as he is trailing by one point in this match. So yes he did it and uh, yes he got an interesting position. It was a quite a complex battle. Let's see what happened. He was having white today as I said. He plays 1d4 as always in this match. c4 and g6 we have another Grunfeld in this match as we had in the first game uh, and remember in that game Anand used the bishop d2 uh, move after the capture on d5 this time he went for a main line another more normal you would call it uh, possibility knight f3 bishop g7 and he plays 5 queen b3 I think this is called the Russian system or something like that if I'm not mistaken, it was popularized by Botvinnik uh, among others, I think in the 50s or 60s of the 20th century. So quite an interesting system, um, really um, lots of uh, very concrete and uh, tactical lines here, possibilities. So it was a good sign here today for Anand, he was going for a dynamic, potentially dynamic position. The game followed the main lines here. This is what usually black does. Uh, he gives uh, white all the center with e4 and d4, but relies on his activity, on his pieces activity, and fast development to get his chances. Uh, now, um, the main line here, well, one of the main lines would be to play a6, and then in some order, if I'm not mistaken, b5, c5, quite uh, leading to quite complicated and complex positions. If I'm not mistaken, there is a nice line there with a queen sacrifice for white, which is quite topical and interesting. I tried to study this some years ago, but um, got nowhere, of course. And, well, this wasn't what Carlson played. He plays knight a6, another main line, another very uh, popular alternative. And I must say, it was a pleasure today uh, to watch the live stream uh, by Guramishvili, Sopika Guramishvili, and Peter Svidler more than other days because Fiddler, I mean, is, he's the world's leading authority in the Grunfeld, so his knowledge here is great and he was really, uh, it was a pleasure uh, listening uh, his knowledge on, on, on live stream. Bishop e2, they are going to follow the main line here, c5, d5, e6, white castles, and the pawn is exchanged on d5. So like in the, uh, let me check, that was the third game, the one Anand won, he once again has a uh, passed pawn on the center, although this time it's not so much advanced that, uh, than that c7 pawn, but once again he gets a dynamic play with his passed pawn now on d5, and it's going to be all, all about this pawn in the game, if white is able to keep it in safe conditions, advance it with in favorable conditions, it will create lots of problems for Carlson, otherwise if it's lost, well, black will have a very easy game. Um, all this was almost splits out as it's the main line and here is where Carlson plays rook e8 uh, it's not the most played here as the very main line after this capture is bishop f5 and would follow something like bishop e3 with queen b6 or rook e8 somehow similar positions maybe could arise but Carlson uh, changes the move order, he plays rook e8 first and here um, Anand after thinking for a while he plays bishop to g5 uh, the explanation to what we're going to see h6 bishop e3 was played uh, could be what uh, Swidler pointed out during the live stream very instructive I think uh, it could be this as bishop e3 right away made uh, may f uh, f uh, fall into some kind of interesting ideas by black I mean if bishop f5, rook a d1 normal moves this could be an idea for black in these kinds of positions as, as I said Svidler was pointing out during the live stream uh, priceless uh, commentary there rook takes e3 could be a kind of idea here and after f takes knight g4 and there is a, of course a huge pin threatened here taking on e3 and if Queen goes to f4 in this exact position. Black has this bishop to h6 supported by the knight on g4. Very nice uh, move, bishop h6. 
and maybe this is the point uh, or was one of the ideas uh, of forcing black playing this h6 by playing bishop g5 first here now after bishop t3 bishop f5 rook a d1 uh, there wouldn't be possible all this uh, line we just saw because and at the end the h square say h6 square isn't available for the bishop uh, by the way if white just passes here uh, sorry if he doesn't play rook a d1 if he just plays something like h3 black's main idea would be as it follows in the game but much easier as knight e4 is usually his idea try to exchange some pieces there if knight takes rook takes queen b3 I mean the rook could go to b4 with a very active piece, uh, piece here uh, taking b3 uh, b2 on the next move this is what black usually gets as a counterplay in these lines uh, it seems very nice piece activity to um, to uh, counter counteract against this uh, white's passed pawn uh, so bishop f5 rook a d1 was played knight e4 anyway and here uh, anand took there are two major alternatives here uh, most probably Anand looked more at the move uh, uh, rook takes e4 as after bishop takes e4 which was what Carlson played uh, he took some time to decide what he was going to play I think he was clearly much better prepared for rook takes here it was a quite interesting possibility let us see a couple of lines here so the queen is under attack and um, going to c1 seems to be a very very logical move almost an only move you may say going to b3 as was pointed out by Natalia Pogonina for instance could be a very easy way of finishing the game after rook b4 queen a3 bishop uh, takes b2 look at who's trapped white queen is going to be uh, erased from the board so going to c1 was probably the only move and here black has this knight b4 idea attacking a2 getting active with his pieces uh, there are a couple of possibilities here if a3 right away now knight c2 and there are some interesting tactics of course you don't want to take on c2 as this is a nasty tactics here the bishop is protecting on f5 attacking with a discovered attack here on, uh, against, the, uh, against the queen but rather if bishop d3 knight takes f takes uh, yes the rook is attacked on e4 but black is going to sacrifice probably the exchange there queen takes on the d5 that important passed pawn bishop takes queen takes even if queen takes c5 bishop takes b2 for instance and black shouldn't be having much problems here there is there is compensation for for the exchange there are, uh, there is uh, there are uh, there is a pawn so far and black has the bishop pair active pieces so uh, there shouldn't be much problem for Carlson here if this was to be played instead after knight b4 there was another possibility of pushing d6 rook c8 and now if uh, white plays a3 there this is slightly different this is interesting to see how uh, move orders could make this kind of differences knight c2 if now we play bishop d3 black has the extra choice of playing knight to d4 he's attacking the knight and there is this uh, pin, this x-rays on the c file as if white takes there black is taking with the pawn attacking queen and uh, bishop at the same time so some tactical possibilities for black this was quite an interesting idea and I'm pretty sure Anand had uh, studied all this very well with his team but Carlson took with the bishop and Anand had to think by himself most probably he went back with the queen to c1 protecting b2 and attacking h6 after which Carlson played queen f6 um, saying I'm going to take b2 almost at any cost even if I'm losing h6 and well if white just tries to save this pawn just with b3 it's a tempi he cannot really afford because rook a d8 and this important d5 pawn may be in danger of falling uh, in black's hands which will mean that black won't have that much of a problem anymore instead after queen f6 Anand traded pawns here he took on h6 black takes on b2 and the queens were exchanged on b2 knight g5 very interesting move uh, was played by Anand here attacking the bishop forcing uh, Magnus to take a decision here 
to make a decision and this got uh, the world champion thinking for more than half an hour I think he was well ahead on the clock and he had to use this time to take a decision here he went with the bishop to d4 finally there was another, certainly there were options here there was another possibility with bishop c2 some messy lines with rook d2 knight b4 protecting the bishop and now a couple of moves uh, once again uh, d6 and a3 are moves here and the difference of move order as we're gonna see is going to make lots of difference here in fact the correct move order for white is to play d6 now he wants to play a3 uh, to uh, harass this defender of c2 uh, I mean the point is that if white plays a3 first black has bishop c3 and if he takes on c2 knight takes this bishop as we're gonna see in the other line doesn't have the c4 square and is under attack with the rook and he doesn't have this tempo if white plays d6 first as he should in this position um, bishop c3 isn't working because rook takes knight takes as we are in the seem in a similar position as in the previous line but white has this tempi bishop c4 attacking f7 both with the knight and the bishop forcing this bishop to uh, so, uh, sorry this rook to f8 to defend it and now well uh, white could also take on f8 but he also has this rook c1 move so slight uh, move order difference makes a huge difference in the board as you can see this is uh, much better for white and in the other move order when white plays a3 first now black is is taking on e2 protecting c2 if white wants to try the same idea he didn't have this time to play bishop c4 anyway this wasn't played Carlson played uh, bishop to d4 now knight takes e4 was played once again uh, this was a quite a complicated game with lots of possibility for both there was another slight uh, interest, slightly interesting game and move order line which was analyzed by Swidler and Nepomniachtchi later who joined the commentary in the second part of the game bishop b5 was quite an interesting um, move here in which case they were giving this interesting line which is in which black is sacrificing the exchange for the d5 pawn bishop takes d5 bishop takes e8 rook takes e8 rook f e1 a couple of possibilities here looks better to play rook c8 and if knight f3 bishop takes g takes knight b4 is bought uh, white has certainly black isn't looking that bad as Pitler was commenting there but if after rook f1 if black tries something like knight c7 he could run into some problems after this exchange is on e8 and rook e1 take a look at this king it looks rather suspicious on the back rank uh, all his uh, all these squares covered by white pieces there is an attack on, BC on, on this knight on e8 maybe black could be holding uh, but it's it's uncomfortable to play this I think well anyway after bishop d4 Anand just took the bishop pair he took on e4 rook takes bishop f3 was played rook back to e7 he pushes his pawn rook d7 bishop f4 and knight b4 was played uh, the knight is attacking a2 and also has the idea to be uh, relocated through c6 where it could be looking great or even c6 e5 could be an idea this was I think a crucial point of the game Anand has been having um, some pressure throughout all the game from the opening and it was uh, clear that if he kept pressuring putting pressure here he if he was able to keep uh, creating ideas he could have really good chances to, to squeeze uh, Magnus Carlsen here otherwise uh, well if he was w wouldn't be finding the, the best the most optimal moves Carlson could get uh, a draw here would, would, which would be a really great boost of, uh, for the match here Vichy played rook d2 just defending the a2 pawn people were saying the most critical uh, possibility was to play a3 knight goes back and rook f e1 say rook a d8 black looks very solid in the center everything very centralized keeping it together this bishop is doing a great job cutting this d file 
and most probably sooner or later white will have to push his 3 against 2 on the king side, try to create a passer there and push in the king side as well. So instead rook d2 was played but I think Carlson said later in the press conference that he was quite relieved to see he was given this e-file for his rook, rook e8 was played, controlling the e-file and here um, I think it's it's um, it's almost uh, uh, equal here because it seems Anand lost his chance, he plays rook c1 but after something like rook e6 h4 was played well and Anand understands he must try to keep going something on the king side to try to open the position a little bit more for his bishop pair as this bishop on d4 isn't really letting him uh, get into the center, the center is quite closed with this bishop, both these rook controlling the past passer very well so he maybe tried to go something on with h4, g4, he should try something there bishop e5 was played he took there, he lost his bishop pair and now it seems very clear that d6 is rather weak at this point it was already very difficult to, to see if there was something really going on for, for Anand in any in the better case maybe he was getting a rook end game with a 3 against 2 here but it was quite uh, easy to hold i think for for these gms and uh, for the disappointment of the indian fans he played here bishop takes b7 going off for a very forced line which was giving him nothing but a very quick draw and this is how the game finished unfortunately for vichy rook takes d7 knight c6 white must promote Black must take, white takes with the check and after 32 rook to d2 they signed the score sheets and agreed another draw this was a really a huge day for Anand if he was to going, uh, if he was going to try to get a victory but uh, it seems like almost a missed chance because he had pressure throughout all the game and only two games remaining in this world championship match Anand will have white pieces in the last 12th game as well very uh, few games remaining Anand is running out of games let's see if he can catch up with Carlson's here in Sochi thanks for watching